Well, good morning. It's good to be together to worship in this beautiful place on such a pretty day. And I'm glad you're here. I hope you'll stay afterwards for refreshments and a time to visit. We have a lot of great food over in the Fellowship Hall again this week. I hope you'll come and be part of that and take some time. I saw all kinds of fruit and stuff, so I hope you'll stay and visit. Uh, we do need people to sign up for the rest of the summer, though. Not necessarily one person, but the rest of the summer, of course. Pick a day, and we have Don't Let Money Be an Issue. We have some money that's been donated to help with the coffee and uh, refreshments. And uh, I can always put the coffee on, and so don't worry about the coffee pot. Uh, I hope you'll uh, sign up. There's a sign-up sheet in the fellowship hall uh, and pick a date that's convenient to you. We have a couple of things I want to highlight. We are gathering materials for our vacation Bible school, which is now only a couple of weeks away. So we need you to uh, look at the, the sheet with all the post-it notes on it of things to donate for the vacation Bible school. We still need volunteers. We still need kids. So talk this up to people that uh, you know that are in the right age bracket for Vacation Bible School. It's going to be a lot of fun this year. This is our superhero station uh, uh, theme this year, and uh, who doesn't like being a superhero? So I hope you'll be part of that uh, the first week of August. Um, we have uh, the a number of missions that we're working on. We're all about mission all summer, so we have a whole bunch of things going on that you can be part of. We are collecting toys. For little toys for Harrison. Harrison Chalger, as you know, died about five years ago at the age of six. And since then, every year, his family has gathered toys to donate to the hospital uh, in Hackensack to, uh, for children. So we need new toys and uh, nice toys, not little junk. We need nice toys. There's a table in the fellowship hall and a box that you'll see in the fellowship hall to put the toys in. And we only have a couple of weeks because they will be collecting those boxes at the end of this month. And no, stuffed no stuffed animals also, I'm told, uh, because the hospital has concerns about uh, the safety for the kids and uh, dander and so toy, new toys, not stuffed animals. Uh, for our help center in town, we are especially collecting, we're always collecting food, but we're especially collecting personal uh, health and toiletry items this summer, so think Toilet, toothpaste, uh, toothbrushes, razors, things like that, deodorant, things that people need that we can be especially helpful in providing this summer. So please bring those. We're always gathering food for the Help Center and for Kumak. We have also a collection of sponges for UMCOR. Uh, if we need the sponges that don't mold, we need the, the little uh, uh, fine, fine texture sponges, if you will. And uh, if you don't know what those are, or you would rather have low-impact mission activity, Sandy has been ordering sponges for us. You can get a whole pack of sponges for a dollar uh, from the Dollar General, and I hope you'll be part of that. We've gathered over 100 sponges so far, I think, or close to it. 109 packs of boxes of sponges are on their way down. I have an order in. I'll have you tell in a minute. Okay. 40, yeah, I, I can't fine. repeat all of it. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I can't remember it. Uh, we're also collecting school supplies for our uh, Sussex Wantage schools for the fall. So uh, I hope you will look at the list we'll have in the fellowship hall. If you can't remember a list or don't want to look at a whole list, bring packs of four dry erase markers. That'll be the thing for the week. Dry erase markers. Any other, in oh, we're gonna invite the choir to come down and sing at the, uh, during the offering. Uh, everybody was so excited last week to hear the choir singing together. But if you're more comfortable singing where you are, we can sing in surround sound. So you can stay where you are and join in the singing. This week we'll be singing Kumbaya, and I hope that you'll be part of that. Let me invite you to prepare your hearts to worship God. Morning. Good morning. Please stand if you're comfortable doing so as we call each other to worship. People of God, why are we here? What is our mission as a church? We bring people to Christ. We help disciples grow. We show Christ's love. 
In our evangelism, nurture, and outreach, the church can show the world the body of Christ. Let us scatter seeds of God's kingdom far and wide. Please remain standing if you're comfortable doing so as we sing This Little Light of Mine from the United Methodist Hymnal number 585. Please be seated as we pray together. Holy God, we thank you for sending us out into the world to proclaim the nearness of your kingdom. Fill us with energy, joy, and hope so that we may scatter seeds of your kingdom wherever we go. Let us show your love in everything we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please listen for a word from God as we read from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 13, verses 1 through 9 and 18 through 23. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lore of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another case sixty, and in another thirty. This is a word from God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Please stand if you're comfortable doing so as we sing In the Garden from United Methodist Hymnal number 314.
Can I invite kids to come and join me? Good morning, everybody. Come right up in the front. Have you ever scattered grass seed on your on your lawn or any around any place? Have you ever planted grass seed? You know how you plant grass seed? You take it and scatter it over the ground that you want the grass to grow on, and you try to be careful that you get it in good places to plant. Uh, but you don't have to push it into the ground like some seeds. Some seeds you have to push way down into the ground and cover up and carefully water and work on them. Grass seed you just kind of throw out onto the ground. The story today that we heard was about somebody going out to plant seeds. Probably wasn't grass seed, it was probably wheat or corn or something like that. And uh, the sower scattered the seed, but the sower didn't just scatter it on good places. Where would you think you would put grass seed here? around over there on the grass, right? So let's scatter some grass seed. This is grass seed that already is mixed with fertilizer and stuff. You can use both hands probably to catch some. Okay. Okay, go plant some grass seed. Throw it around. Okay. You wanna throw grass, you don't wanna eat it. Throw it around, there you go. Okay, we've got lots of grass seed. So, find a place to plant it. Now, if this was really valuable seed, you'd want to throw it maybe where it was most likely to grow. Where would you think that would be? On fertile, on the good soil. Where's the good soil? Over there in the garden. But the guy in the story, the sower in the story, throws it every place. Throws some over that way, some over that way, some over there, some back there. It's just going every which way. Do you think it's going to grow on the deck very well? Probably not. Why is it throwing all over the place? Because there's plenty of it. You can go every place. There's a chance for everything. What that story tells me is that God wants everybody to have a chance to hear about how much God loves us. Even people who are not likely to listen, even people who don't likely care, it's going to be available for everybody because God never worries about God's love running out. There's always plenty to go around. God throws the seed every which away, and we should throw God's love every which away and share it with everybody, right? So we can be loving and kind to just about anybody we meet, whether they look like a good or nice person or not whether they look like they're interested or not, whether they look like they are going to be mean to us or not, we can share God's love every place. And that's because the more we share, the more there is. There's plenty to go around. Let's pray. God, we thank you that you always give us plenty of your love. You surround us with so much love that there's no need to be careful with it. We can share it with everybody. We can be kind and loving to everybody we meet. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, thank you. We'll come back afterwards. We can throw grass seed all around over in there where the grass isn't growing very well. Anybody here ever have a garden? that you worked on the garden. How did you get the plants for your garden? Seedlings. seedlings. A lot of people go to the store and buy seedlings already started. They're in little pots. You can put the pot even right in the ground sometimes and the pot will go right into the soil and you don't even have to take it out of the pot. Other times it's in a plastic pot. And you have to just take it out and plop it into a little hole in the ground. If you're planting from seeds, where do you get the seeds? The store. I used to sit with a seed catalog every January and February and imagine all these magnificent plants I was going to grow and 
order way too many seeds and then get the bill for them and go, whoa, they cost a lot. You don't have to even go to the catalog now. You can go straight to the grocery store or the hardware store or the garden store or just any number of other places and the seeds will be right there waiting for you. But not so in Jesus' time. In those days, you couldn't go to the store and get seeds. You had to save them from the previous crop that you grew. If you were a farmer, you had to make sure that you took some of the seeds from whatever it was you had grown, carefully save them out and dry them. You had to lay them out in the sun on a mat and let them totally dry out because if you tried to save them when they were still moist, they would rot. They would mold over the winter and they would not grow in the spring. So you had to save them very carefully and then gather them up and put them in as cool a place as you could find, not easy in the Middle East, and a dry place and store them all winter until the next spring because if you didn't, there would be nothing to plant the next year. Nothing that you couldn't buy anyway. You had to have money to buy more seed from some trader and that was hard because everybody, for the most part, was poor. And you had to save that seed and then hope that it was going to grow. Not every seed saved for a year would grow the next year. So you had to save more than you thought you needed so that there would be enough seed for the crop for next year. Because a subsistence farmer knows that if the seeds don't grow in this year, there's no seeds for next year either. There's nothing to eat for the winter, there's nothing to sell, and there's nothing to grow in the year to come. So it's going to be really hard times ahead. You had to be very careful with your seeds. You had to put them in the place very carefully tended, very carefully prepared, because that's the only way your family was going to survive. You had to be careful. But the sower in the story is not careful at all. The sower in the story goes out to sow and throws seed every which way. Throws seed on the night of the good and fertile ground, sows seed in the thorny ground, sows seed in the rocky ground, sows seed out in the middle of the road. Why? Why so frivolous? Why so amazingly crazy to throw seed everywhere? And what does that mean? This is one of the few parables that Jesus actually tr interprets. He offers some interpretation because the disciples asked him, what did, what did that mean? He got with them privately and they said, you know, that's an interesting story, but what was that about? And so Jesus offered this interpretation. He says what the different types of ground represent. The seeds that fell on the, the thin soil, the poor soil, are like those who get excited about the word, but they don't have deep roots and they wither away when everything gets hard. When things become troublesome, they wither. The seeds that were thrown on rocky ground or on the road are the ones who don't pay attention at all, don't get anything out of it. The seeds on thrown on the thorny ground are those who are overcome by the cares and troubles and temptations of the world. The seeds that are thrown on the good soil are like those who are able to produce who are able to produce many times their own value. So many seeds from only one seed. They're able to do great things because they have deep and effective roots and they are healthy plants. There you go, the end. Now, if you're the disciples, you're probably scratching your head and going, oh, yeah, but so what? What does that mean? It means, okay, some people hear about the kingdom of God and they respond and some people don't. Some people have firm and solid faith and some have shallow and weak faith. Some are overcome by temptation. We know that already. What does that suggest? But they were, of course, too nervous to ask that. And so the parable was brought down to us the way it is. And we are left wondering what to make of this and where to take it. I think it doesn't take that much thought, if you think about it carefully, to begin to think that, oh, then there is a point about we want to be, we want to see the benefit, the value, the joy in the good news. We want to be part of God's kingdom. We want to be with God and close to God, so it's better to be the good soil than the crummy soil. 
We can figure that out right away. And if we believe, we think, well, I must be pretty good soil because here I am in church. No. Certainly it's good to have a sense of faith. But I think there's more here than that. Because we're not, if anybody who has cared for a garden knows, you're not stuck immutably with the soil in front of you. The soil can be changed. It can be worked on. It can be improved. What can we do to make ourselves better soil, more receptive soil, more productive soil for the word, the seed that is sown in us? Well, there's lots of things that we can do, and we've been talking about them all summer. There are things that we can do to make ourselves more receptive to God and more open to God's presence in our lives. We've talked about those things. We've talked about reading the Bible. We've talked about the importance of having a habit. So you begin to meditate, and you begin to think, and you begin to grow in your understanding. That way you're not just stuck. You don't have to read just the Bible, too. Other things about the faith, you're not just stuck with the faith that you learned in grade school, or in middle school, or even in high school. We keep learning all the time, only by having a habit of trying to learn. Prayer is really important. It builds our faith up. It strengthens us. It builds that relationship that gives us strength in the hard times. Coming to church and being with other people in the faith is important. It builds relationships that we rely on when things get difficult, that celebrate with us when things are good. We have a kind of relationship that calls us back to God emotionally, not people getting after us, but people who we want to be with that draw us into a family of faith. There is importance in presence. We've been talking about meditation this summer. Anybody who, is, who has come to the meditation groups on Wednesday evening, the prayer groups that Lynn has led? How do you think of it? It's been great, hasn't it? Has it seemed weird or kooky or new agey? No, it's all, it's all based on the Bible. It's all thoughtful. And it's a time of reflection and rest and kindness and hopefulness, really, I think. It's been a wonderful thing to learn to meditate on the scripture and meditate on God's meaning in our lives. All those things make us more receptive. Being in service makes us more receptive too. We find when we are committed to something, we put our energy and our time and our effort into something, we care more about it. If you've ever owned a house or owned a car, you know that you don't care about it as much until you start having to work on it. When you have to even clean, it help, makes a difference. When you paint or repair things or add on to things or redecorate, you care more about your house or your car or your garden or anything else. The same is true with your faith life. When you work at it, when you help in service to help other people, to do things for people, you care more about them. You care more about the faith that brought you there too. There are things we can do individually that build on our faith then. But it's true of churches, too. What can we do as a church to be more fruitful, to be better soil for the Word of God? We've got to figure out always, are we so rocky here? Are we so barren as soil that nobody would want to be part of this? We have to broaden always what we do. We can deepen the roots that are building here as a group, as a church, as an institution. We do that in lots of different ways. We do that by first being welcoming. We're good at that, but we can always be better. We can welcome people who are strangers in our midst, who don't know you. We can be kind and walk up, just say hello to people you don't know. There are a lot of people around, I'll bet that you recognize, but don't really know their names or don't really know much about them beyond their names. We can use our fellowship time to build on that. We can call people when we know they're in the hospital. Connie Burns is in the hospital this week. Be a good time to call John and let him know we're thinking about him. We're a good time to let people know that we're thinking about them in any kind of trouble, any kind of illness, any kind of recovery. We can send cards. We can remind people who are away in the service or in school that we care about them. There are things that we can do also to broaden who we talk to. 
who we think of as a prospect. The sower throws seed every which way, which means there's plenty to go around. We don't have to focus only on good prospects, people likely to come to church, people likely to be like us, people likely to think the way we think and do the things we do and share our values. We can think more broadly. Imagine people that you imagine as a group, typically, are not very good prospects for church. Just think of somebody. And imagine how we can broaden who we even say hello to, who we think of as a possible friend, who we think of as somebody who might like to know about God's love. There's also the fact that as churches we can do more than we think we can do. We can broaden the kinds of things we're willing to try. The typical thing that happens to churches when they feel constricted, constrained in resources, constrained in people, is that they get timid about what they try. We try things that we know will work, and we don't try things that might not work. One of the things that involves scattering seed broadly is trying things that might not work. We can try things to improve our mission. We can try things to improve our worship. That's why we're talking about getting video for our worship, for example. It's why we're talking about new and different kinds of music. It's why we're talking about expanding the mission activities that we're doing all summer long because we want to take the time when lots of people turn away and forget about God, they're on vacation for the summer, and use it for the work of the kingdom. There are ways that the church can be more fruitful and more faithful and better soil better soil for incubating the seed of the kingdom. So not only individuals, but also the church. But there's one other point here in this that I think is important. We have the question of who do we care about? Who do we care about? In so many ways, the church has been self-identifying itself. I don't mean us as a congregation. I mean the capital C church has been identifying itself as only a certain kind of person, as people who share certain kinds of attitudes toward politics, certain kinds of attitudes toward social activity, certain kinds of people who have certain, at the same attitudes that we have toward what we wear, toward how we speak, toward what we think. We need to imagine bigger things. We need to think of more people as our mission field not write people off as not good people, not write people off as never going to come, not write people off as beyond the reach of God's love. The broader we can imagine, the wider we can imagine God's love. The wider we can imagine our possible reach, the more possibility there is for changing the whole world. Because the fact of this parable is that the sower is sowing seeds in such a crazy way because there is no shortage. There is no shortage. A smart farmer knows you don't throw seeds someplace if you only have a few left. God's word, God's love is limitless. There is no boundary to it. There is no shortage. The more seed that is scattered out, the more there is to scatter. The same is true in our lives, in our hope, in our church, in our outreach. There is no limit to God's love. So whatever we try and whatever we care and whenever we fail, there's always more. There's always more. This is such good news. This is a kingdom of bounty, not a kingdom of shortage. And it is an opportunity for us to celebrate, to celebrate the seeds of the kingdom. Amen. Every week we have the opportunity to share our prayers, not only our concerns, our worries about people's health, but also our joys, also our hopes. We lift our prayers up with confidence, knowing that God hears us and cares about us. I especially want to lift up this week prayers for Connie, who is in the hospital with an infection. We want to pray for her and for John as well. We also want to pray for um, Pastor Joel Vanderwerken and his family who are 
moving from Sussex uh, to an, another congregation in Massachusetts. This is uh, Pastor Joel's last week at the Christian Reformed Church. So we want to pray for them and their family and also for the church uh, that they have served so faithfully here in Sussex. What other joys and concerns would you raise? I will leave in, in time in the, in the prayer. Let's, let's lift our hearts in prayer. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for this day and for every day. We give you thanks for calling us to help with your sowing, with your tending, with your harvest. We give you thanks that you have given us the opportunity to share your love with others. And we ask your guidance and strength that we may do it well and faithfully. Lord, we lift up all the prayers that we have in our hearts of celebration and joy, all the prayers we have of concern and worry, prayers for those who are suffering and sick, those who are struggling with decline in health, those who are struggling with violence, with injustice, with death. We lift up our prayers at this time, either out loud or silently in our hearts, knowing with confidence that you hear us. Lord, we know you hear our prayers. You know that we are weak, but we know that you are strong, that you surround us with your love always. And so we come as confident children before you, lifting our prayers and saying the words that you taught your disciples always to say in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We have one of our community crosses has come back this Saturday night, Worship asks that we send it to Connie in the hospital. Let's join our prayers in sending the cross to her as we see in the bulletin the prayer for sharing the community cross. Lord, we thank you that you're always with us in good times and bad. We pray that this cross will be a sign of your presence and love. We also pray that it will be a sign of our prayers, which we send forth with it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's bring now our gifts and our offerings with glad and generous hearts. Let me invite the, anybody who would like to be the summer choir to come down and join yeah. in singing Kumbaya.
prayer. Dear Lord, we pray that you will accept and bless our offerings so that we may work in unity to help transform the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn is, Do Lord Remember Me. Before we get to that, I want to remember this is Chris Gregory's 50th birthday. So. Maybe we should sing happy birthday. Okay? Okay. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. forth from this time and place to love and serve you, that we go forth to scatter seed of your love everywhere, that we go in confidence, unafraid of anything, because we know that wherever we go and whatever we do and whatever happens to us, the love of God the Father, the grace and peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit will go with us and abide with us now and always. Thanks be to God. Amen. God bless you all.